Hello guys and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and joined the Literature Club and nothing else happened. Not a single thing. Anyways, in this episode, we're going to go ahead and just hop right into this. <clears throat> Hi again, MC. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the Literature Club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, MC. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you, making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, 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 come on, like he deserves any slack. You already had to be dragged here by Monica. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Oh, Monica, you're kind of standing in front of the text box. Uh, excuse me. I'll have to click ahead and then... Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Mm -mm. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. I'm sorry, MC. We'll make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Um, anyway... Now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have an interest in picking up a book to read. Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now, so it only feels right for me to do something like that if you ask. Wait! I didn't mean it like that. If you really don't want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. Uh, no, it's not like that, Yuri. I want to try to be a part of this club. So even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Uh, are you sure? I just felt like, well, as vice president and all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I, so I picked up a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How's this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book that she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew! Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. So, you must have just noticed that right now. During that entire last sequence, since the beginning of this episode, the room has been tilting slightly and zooming in a bit. So that's just one of the things that they do to sort of mess with your head. It's something that you might not really notice when you're first seeing it, but then when it like shifts back, then you'll be like, oh, what the hell was that? And it's also especially easy to notice if while it's tilting, like while you're watching this YouTube video right now, you use the arrow keys to skip ahead by five seconds, then you'll be able to spot it very easily. But when you're looking at it in the moment, it's kind of hard to tell. Also, since I wanted to go ahead and show off that room tilting thing, I didn't mention yet, if you go ahead and look in the files, a text file called Can You Hear Me has been added. I'll go ahead and read what that is now. There's a little devil inside all of us. Beneath their manufactured perception, their artificial reality, is a writhing, twisted mess of dread, loathing, judgment, elitism, self-doubt, all thrashing to escape the feeble hold of their host, seeping through every little crevice they can find, into their willpower, starving them of all motivation and desire, into their stomach, forcing them to drown their guilt in comfort food, or into a newly opened gash in their skin, hidden only by the sleeves of a cute new shirt. Such a deplorable, tangled mass is already present in every single one of them. That's why I choose not to blame myself for their actions. All I did was untie the knot. Very interesting indeed. It seems we're getting to see more into the perspective of the person who's writing these notes for us. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, 
like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Ugh. Okay, so here's some fun things about this. Depending on whose route you go on, you get different scares and stuff like that. So, I during Act 1, I didn't really mention what happened on any of the other routes because, you know, I was still keeping up the guys that this was a dating sim. But during Act 2 here, I'm going to be telling you about all of the different scares that you get on the different routes, or at least the ones that I have written down. One thing that you might not notice if you're just reading through it the text quickly if you're going down Yuri's route is that while you're talking to her her eye will slowly just start floating off of her face you might not even see that happening if you're just kind of skipping through the text quickly or just or if you're just a fast reader but yes her eye does start slowly floating off of her face I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet she seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? Fucking Monica. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Ugh. Sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. How did you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I, I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst the stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hands. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one missing book is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can go do it through the glass on that door. She points at... She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging or anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, MC. Consider this a lesson. Don't judge a book. In fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm gonna show you exactly why. She shoved the book right into my hands. Ugh. I stared at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking the animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly moe. Don't just stand there. Ugh. Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes the seat against the wall beneath the window sills. She pats the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Eh, what's that? I guess it's easier to be close together like this. You don't just say that. You'll make me f you'll make me feel weird about it. Natsuki crosses her arms and scooches an inch away from me. Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting in this, this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. It looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not! Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince one of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. 
You know what I mean? Hmm? You don't? Um, that's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Ah, uh, sorry. Heh. <laughs> like I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up without them being all like, Eh, you, haven't, you still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I kind of gravitated toward the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Huh? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I haven't, I can't even keep it in my own room. My da dad would beat the shit out of me if he found this. At least it's safe in here in the club room. Except Monica's kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? So? <laughs> Jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flipped the page. Time passes. It sure did. Natsuki is strangely quiet now. I glance over at her. It looks like she started to fall asleep. Hey, Natsuki? Y yeah? Suddenly, Natsuki collapses straight into me. H hey! <laughs> oh, jeez. Natsuki, are you alright? Here. Monica reaches into her bag and pulls out some kind of protein bar. She throws it in Natsuki's direction. Natsuki's eyes suddenly light up again. She's, she snatches the bar from the floor and immediately tears off the wrapper. I told you not to give... Mm. She doesn't even finish her sentence before stuffing it into her mouth. Don't worry, MC. She's fine. It just happens every now and then. That's why I always keep a snack in my bag for her. Anyway... Why don't we all share poems now? It's poem sharing time! That means I have a bunch of fun more trivia for you. First of all, Natsuki. Fun fact, if you go down Yuri's route and you make a poem so bad that she hates it, her eyeballs will literally pop out of its sockets. Yay! Anyway, I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. Okay, well, let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um... Natsuki rereads my poem. N never mind, I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Eh? Then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Eh. Uh, in fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I wanted to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Uh, well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. You were supposed to share, show me some dumb poem and make me go, Heh, well, it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. So, in other words, you're saying you liked it? Ah. Uh, Natsuki's retort gets caught in her throat. Uh, you're so... You just... You don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that you don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you, know, you still need to show me yours, right? Gah, fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. <clears throat> This poem is called Eagles Can Fly, Monkeys Can Climb, Crickets Can Leap, Horses Can Race, Owls Can Seek, Cheetahs Can Run, Eagles Can Fly, People Can Try, but that's about it. Once again, absolute masterpiece. Quick aside, I'm just going to go ahead and skip past this stuff here because I didn't realize while recording that 
I could skip past it because it was stuff that we already read during Act 1, so skipping past this just for your convenience. Yuri's poem. It's the same thing. Just to make sure I don't... Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't have skip text on. Like, skipping unseen text, rather. Monica. Yeah, and then skipping is disabled. Hi, MC. Having a good time so far? Ah, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities, or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, MC. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. I like it, MC. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> Oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. If you're interested in Natsuki, then always keep a snack on you. She'll cling to you like a puppy. <laughs> Natsuki's dad doesn't give her lunch money or leave her any food in the house, so she's in a fussy mood pretty often. But sometimes she just loses all of her strength and shuts down. Like earlier. This is just a guess, but I think she's so small because her malnutrition is interfering with her adolescent growth. But hey, some guys are into petite girls too, you know? Sorry, just trying to look at the bright side. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. So this is an interesting one. This one is called Hole in Wall. Same as the previous girls having the same poems as before. But you look at the first line, and it seems like this thought is in the middle of something. And if you go ahead and look back at the previous poem, at the previous Hole in the Wall poem, it ends with, it ends with something along the lines of, But I wasn't looking in. I was looking out and he on the other side wasn't looking in. But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glance at my surroundings, but my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simple, simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. So that's very interesting. It seems like we got a continuation of the first poem. Something to keep in mind, I guess. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. And if this goes anything like last time, something bad is gonna happen. So... That, yeah, that's gonna be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.